Hello everybody, Slim Kirby here, and welcome back to more of the Super Mario RPG playthrough. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say this now, the first part of this video will be post-commentary, but uh, I will get into live commentary at some point. I just want to take care of a few um, loose ends first, and some things that were kind of, I guess, grind-heavy, I guess you could say. And uh, because of that, I think uh, post-commentary would just be more sensible because that way I can actually, you know, explain uh, what I want to talk about. So, um, first and foremost, um, the first thing I want to show off, and I'm not really going to show it off, I just want to kind of point it out because I actually forgot to do this since I took the trampoline out of here when I first came back through here. Um, but in this room right here, in the Land's End Underground, before you get to the Balone Temple, um, we actually got a star from this guy over here. You can actually get that star to respawn again. And you can actually use that to uh, get some extra EXP. Which I chose not to do because I don't think it's necessary. I don't think we'll get as much EXP anymore. And uh, when he comes back with the star, you have to spend 800 coins as opposed to... I think it was 400. So it's a very expensive star, man. And just didn't really feel like, you know, showing that off. Didn't think it was necessary, but did want to at least point that out. Uh, the next thing, um, I am back here in uh, Great Guys Casino, and uh, we're actually going to receive the reward for basically beating Great Guy in this uh, mini game a hundred times. Now, I'm not going to show this to you because it took a very long time. It took about 30 minutes of recording, and I'll be honest with you guys, I didn't even notice that I got the message. I was just doing this for a long time. Realized I've not gotten this yet, and then I checked my item inventory, and sure enough, I actually had it with me the whole time. <laughs> so I actually did not notice me winning this, and I tried to look for through the footage, but it just was taking way too long, and I just didn't want to spend forever on it. But uh, yeah, uh, for beating Great Guy a hundred times, you get the Star Egg. Now the Star Egg is actually a very interesting item. It's a uh, item that is never uh, consumed when you use it and um, it's basically like a rock candy or a bomb item where it basically just does damage to every enemy on the field it doesn't do a whole lot of damage I think it only does like a hundred but uh, the power of it can actually get boosted by Geno boost and likewise it can get negatively impacted by you know negative status ailments like fear and whatnot too so keep that in mind it's not an amazing item, but, you know, if you want to do some damage with a character who's not really good at attacking, or if you just, you know, want to defend or not really use a character, you can just opt to use that instead, I guess. But, um, I kind of mentioned this before, but, uh, I actually kind of got confused when I first talked about the item you get from a great guy, because there's actually a second item that shares a very similar name that you get from the treasure hunter in Moleville. Um, there's the Star Egg, and then there's the Mystery Egg. The Star Egg is what I just explained, and that's what you get from the Great Guy. But the Mystery Egg is actually a different item. And, like I said, you get that from the Treasure Hunter in Moleville. And uh, this item has a very, very specific effect. And this is actually something that I don't think I even showcased in my original Let's Plays of this game. So I figured, you know what, I'm going to go the extra mile and actually showcase these items. I wouldn't say this is actually worth it, but, uh, you know, it, it is something I did want to show off at the very least. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and use the Mystery Egg here, and we're going to use it with Peach. Notice how you heard like a little, uh -uh, like, wrong sound effect there. Um, I'll explain that in a minute, um, but first I'm going to go ahead and showcase this with Mario, the Star Egg. This is basically what this does. It makes a couple of uh, star enemies appear. They do a little dance. And as you can see, a lot of damage to all the enemies. And see, the reason why I did 150 instead of 100 is because I had like a boost. Um, I forget which item I have. Um, troop of Metal. Okay, yeah, so that's the um, Geno boost that you get from wearing the Troop of Metal, which is kind of cool. But the reason why um, the item didn't work with Peach was I actually wasn't wearing the Nurture Ring. I thought I equipped it when I bought it just a little bit ago. 
But, um, yeah, the mystery egg does not work without the nurture ring on Peach. So you have to use this item with Peach, and you have to um, have the nurture ring equipped as well. When you do that, the item will, you know, it'll make a good sound, or it won't make a bad sound anyway. And it'll seem like nothing will happen. But see, there's a reason for that. Because this is an item that you actually have to use a number of times. So, you know, it's not just a one and done item. And for this item in particular, I believe you have to use it ten times, if I'm not mistaken. So, once again, make sure the Nurture Ring's on Peach. It's called the B-Tub Ring in the original game. And then use this item ten times in battle. Um... And then you can get to the next step of this item. This is a very convoluted item to get. And like I said, I honestly don't think it's worth it. But it, it is something fun. And I'm glad they actually kept it for this game. Um, but after you use it ten times, you'll get a message that says you're a great shepherd. And when you do that, if you check the items again, which I, I think I forgot to do in this battle. But I'll definitely showcase it in the next battle. Um, you'll actually get a different item. The mystery egg will become something else. So, we took down these enemies. Yeah, we're only fighting, like, little grunt soldiers here, but, uh... The reason why I'm doing that is just to get this done as quickly as possible. Honestly, if you get this early enough, you could kind of do this, like, as you're making progress throughout the game, but... You know, obviously I didn't want to, you know, do that and make the fights seem kind of ridiculous. But we get the Lambsler item, and this item is basically you can turn one of the enemies potentially into a lamb and just have them get taken out of the battle. Pretty weird item. <laughs> very, very weird item. But it is interesting because if you actually use this item... 48 times, you'll get another message that says the flock is full. You kind of probably saw it there in the corner. And then it'll turn into the sheep attack item, which is basically the lamb's lure again, but it attacks all enemies. And that's it. That's what the, that's what this item is, sheep attack. This is how you get that item. It's uh, really interesting, and yeah, uh, that's, that's what that is. So we got the lamb's lure. I would not recommend using that on bosses or anything of that nature. It's just, you know, kind of just a fun little item you can get if you really want to go for it. So just remember the process for that. You got to get the mystery egg from the guy in Moleville, the treasure hunter. Once you get the mystery egg, get the nurture ring um, from Marymore. Put that on Peach. Then use the mystery egg 10 times. It'll turn into the lamb's lure. Then use the lamb's lure 48 times. Then it'll turn into the sheep attack. And that's pretty much the process for that. The next thing I'm showcasing, as you can plainly see, I actually managed to get a pretty good super jump combo. Didn't get 100 <laughs> by any stretch, but I did get up to 60. Which is enough to get one of the items, but not both of them. So if you get 30 super jumps, talk to this guy right here, the Chow. And he will give you the Attack Scarf, which is a really good item. It protects against mortal blows, so one hit KO moves will not hurt you. And it boosts all of your stats by 30. <laughs> it's really freaking good. Honestly, this item is pretty broken as it is. Not as broken as the reward you get for 100 super jumps, though. And uh, I'm going to very quickly um, pause the video right here. Uh, just so I can, you know, address that really quick. But, um, yeah. The uh, item you get for 100 super jumps is called the super suit. I think I kind of called attention to it before. The super suit is pretty much just like the attack scarf. The only difference is it doesn't protect against mortal blows, but it does protect you against negative status effects and also elemental attacks. And instead of boosting all of your stats by 30, it boosts all of your stats except speed by 50, and then you still have the 30 speed boost. So 
The super suit's kind of a better attack scarf, but it's also like an armor. It's not an accessory. And any character can wear it, too. So it's it's a really good item. It's a very, very good item. <laughs> but uh, I'm not going to get it. Um, I think that uh, the timing for super jumps... While I do admit that it is easier in the remake, I honestly feel like it's actually kind of difficult with the Switch's equipment, so to speak. Because... Even though I'm using a plugged-in Pro Controller, I do feel like there's a little bit of input delay. And as a result, like even if it feels like I'm getting the timing exactly right, there's just points where the combo just ends. And, uh, you know, I'm tired of trying over and over again. But uh, if I had to suggest something, if you like really want to practice this and try to get the Super Suit, here's what I'd recommend you do. Go to... Bandit's Way or any any area that has like a spiky enemy that, uh, you know, Mario can't jump on or, you know, you can jump on him, but you'll do zero damage. Uh, make sure Mario has the flower ring equipped so you use less FP. Save your game like in the first area in Bandit's Way and then just keep entering the enemies with spikies and then just keep practicing super jump until, you know, you essentially get the timing down. Just uh, when you're actually like examining, like the um, one thing that kind of helped me in regards to finding the timing is just keep your eye really close to the spiny. And whenever Mario lands directly on it, like whenever you see his foot on the spiny, that's when you want to press the button. And if you get that timing right, you can also use volume to your advantage since there is kind of a sound cue that you can use. If you keep following that, at some point you'll get it. So just keep practicing, and at some point you'll maybe get the super suit. I know a lot of my friends, friends that I'm pretty sure like never got even the original super suit before, actually said that it's so much easier to get in this version. And I can see why. It's just I really feel like there's like too much delay with like the switches, like pro controllers, and you know, I don't even want to think about using, like, the Joy-Cons for something like that, because Joy-Cons just really messed up. But yeah, I did want to, at the very least, you know, kind of address that. Uh, let you guys know that I did try for those items. But even if I got the Super Suit, I probably wouldn't use it, um, because it's very broken. And you honestly do not need it to beat the game, even post-game stuff. I did the post-game stuff without Super Suit. I did it without the Attack Scarf, even. And even beyond that, I actually did that, like, not even at max level. So you really don't need it for anything. Don't let anyone say that it's practically required for post-game, because it's not. But um, it is an item that if you, you know, work for it, you could probably get it and do some really, really good damage with it. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Moving on, as you can see, we are back in the Midas River, or... Yeah, the, yeah, Midas River, that's right. <laughs> it's like, this is more of like the waterfall section of Midas River. Anyway, the reason why I'm here is there are two paths that I technically haven't showcased to you guys yet. Um, the first path we haven't seen is the path past the uh, left junction with the first cave. If you skip that, you get this other room down here. And the interesting thing about this one is you do get a reward for doing this cave. And you can actually see the reward right there. Um, so if you just get to the end of this, you'll get a frog coin. And that's really about it. That's all you get for that, honestly. Um, I'll show the second one a bit later in this video. But I did want, at the very least, kind of, you know, showcase this path here. Because technically I hadn't shown it before. So I wanted to actually do that. And if you go further down, you can actually see there's another frog coin here. So, hey, we got three frog coins for our trouble, which is kind of nice. So, yeah, hooray for that. I don't know why I'm even trying for these coins. I really don't need them. <laughs> I really, really don't need them. Um, but as you can see, we are back in Moleville now. Um, I am actually going to showcase one other thing I kind of talked about in the previous video, but didn't really showcase. And it did actually happen here. Now, I don't know if this is random, or you just have to do this three times, or... I don't know what triggers this exactly, but um, sometimes if you give the Carbo Cookie to 
this mole girl, um, she'll actually drop it inside the bucket. And as a result, if you jump on top of the bucket, you can actually warp back to Midas River again. <laughs> yeah, I know. Very, very weird. Um, very weird warp, I guess you could say. And that's how you actually get to that cave right there. If you ever wondered, like, what that was for. It's for that bucket, I guess. They just kind of wanted to include, like, an extra way to get here, I guess. And, um, I don't think I'm actually going to show it in this video. But, um, when you reach the end of the course when doing it this way, um, you actually get to keep your coins that you get. So, you don't actually have to give the coins to the toad at the bottom of Midas River. All you do is just keep what you get and... That's about it. Next time you do the course, I believe the toad will be back. Unless you do it in this fashion. Is what I'm assuming, anyway. Is what I'm assuming. Um, but yeah, here's the other path that we haven't seen in Midas River. And as you can see, you do lose coins if you uh, take that path. So, be very wary of that. It's not really that great of a thing to do. So, ignore that path at all costs, because it'll be a net loss for you, basically. And the last uh, couple of things I want to show off are here in Marymore. Um, I'm going to save my game before I do this because uh, this will require a lot of coins to be lost in the process. Um, but first and foremost, if you talk to this guy while carrying the Bright card, which is the card you use to get inside Great Guy's Casino, he will actually barter for it. Like, he'll actually, like, you know, try to bribe you to get the card. Um, I don't think you want to do this. I think you will actually lose it since, obviously, the casino is not a required location. So, you know, don't get rid of it unless you, like, really want those items and you have no reason to go back to the casino. So, just be careful of that. I don't know if you can, like, get a second bright card or not. Knowing the remake, maybe there is a way if, like, you, like, you know, go back to Knife Guy and he's like, Oh, hey, you want to try to win another one or something? But... Ultimately, that's your call. Ultimately, it's your call. Um, but the second thing I want to show off is I want to show off what happens when you stay at the suite. So, you follow this toad up here to the room. It's a pretty nice room. Looks really, really nice, actually. You know, you got a nice bathrobe up there, which you can't wear, unfortunately. Now, that would have been cool if like, you could actually like get the bathrobe and keep the bathrobe or something. Um, yeah, make sure you give the toad a tip. And then you can kind of explore your new room. Yeah, as you can see, it's too small for you, so you can't even wear it. You can jump on the bed. You can ring this bell to order room service. Um, I think you can only get, like, pick-me-ups and caro caros or Croca-Colas or whatever they're called. So, you know, get that if you want. And the last thing you can do in here is you can actually... You know, well, I have to get this guy to lose. Or loosed. <laughs> yeah, lose! Lose this video game, you toad. No, get that get that toad to leave. Then we're going to go inside the bathroom. And Mario's going to have, like, a nice, you know, relaxing time. And I'm, what I'm assuming is a hot tub, jacuzzi of some kind. I believe he'll even come out of the room with, like, some blush on his face. From being in a hot jacuzzi for so long. And then we're going to go to sleep. Ah, what a lovely night we had here at the Mary Moore Suite. You know what would be fun? You know what would be really, really fun? If we just uh, stayed here again. Why not? We're already here. We're in the room. We might as well just stay longer. Surely there can't be any neg negative uh, ramifications for this. In fact, you know what? Let's do it again. <laughs> Let's just stay here three nights. That should not be any sort of issue for anyone. Ah, uh, You know what? That bed is so comfy. Let's stay a fourth night, too. <laughs> and yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. You can actually stay longer. However, if you stay longer than what you're supposed to, you will actually get charged for those extra nights and if you get charged for those extra nights and you don't have the coins to pay 
your bill, they will actually make you work it off. And I've always loved this. <laughs> I've always loved seeing Mario work the Mary Moore Hotel. It's just a really funny scene. And, you know, it, it, it kind of just, it's a, it's a charming aspect of this game where you just kind of see something that you probably wouldn't have expected. And I just really like that they not only kept this in here, but the fact they even did this to begin with. So, yeah, Mario the Bellhop. And it's so cool, like, he's even, like, doing, like, everything in, like, the same order as the other Toad did. He's like, here's the bathrobe, you know, here's the bathroom, blah, 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 here, I want a tip. Of course, these guys aren't going to give us a tip, but eh, it is what it is. Can't stay the night, unfortunately. <laughs> I love how I actually tried that, though. But you can actually go to the bathroom again, and you can actually <laughs> get the uh, pink face of Mario again now you can't actually keep that like when you leave like once you leave the um room the face will return to normal but it's kind of funny that he just he can just do that when the people staying in the room are just still here would have been funny if they actually like you know actually like said something it's like did you just use our bathroom <laughs> uh silly silly funny stuff anyway um I'm not sure, like, how much you gain back as you do this, but, um, you might have to do it, like, an extra visitor or two, depending on how many coins you owe the hotel. But, um, as you can see, we're still, still working. I think after this guy, we will actually, um, get to move on. Well, not that guy, but what about that guy? Or, I think this is a girl, actually. Is it? I can't really tell. I, I honestly can't tell. <laughs> I don't see any of the, like, toad girl pigtails on it. But... Um, I believe this will, person will actually give us a tip, though, which is kind of nice. And I think I should mention, you do get a reward for staying in the suite in the first place. You do get, like, a flower tab, I think. Which we don't really need, so I don't really feel bad that, like, well, I'm going to go ahead and, like, reset this anyway. So... I'm probably not going to stay at the suite just to get that again. So, after we do that, after we see our guest out, I believe that'll actually do it. Yep, <laughs> don't ever spend the night here without any money. Yeah, well, hey, that's uh, that's pretty much it. Um, that's pretty much all I wanted to showcase, at least in terms of post-commentary. Um, but yeah, let's uh, get back to live commentary. Uh, I think I'm going to showcase the next Bowser doors we haven't seen yet. And after we get done with that, uh, probably in the next video, we'll showcase any optional boss fights that we still have. So yeah, see you guys then. Hey guys, this is Slim Kirby and I am back uh, from post-commentary. I don't know if this is the start of a new video or part of the first video or not, but uh, I have a few things that I still want to cover before we move on with the game, and uh, these should be the last things that uh, I'm going to be covering. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to cover the two Bowser doors that we haven't entered yet. Uh, we still have one puzzle room and one action room that we have to do. Um, we have to kind of still guess which one is the right one, unfortunately. I think if we get a battle room, we can opt out of it by just, like, canceling, but... Uh, we might have to do the others, or at least fail the others, so let's hope that we get these um, as quickly as possible. Um, okay, this is the battle room. Yep. So, not door one. Not door two! <laughs> I think this is the other... Damn it. Uh, yeah, this is the other action room, so this is the one we want to find. Unfortunately, as I mentioned before, I think this is actually the tougher of the two action rooms. Um, at least in this version of the game, because I swear, like, control stick movement in this is... I, I don't know if it's just my controller or not, but it can be really finicky, and I don't like 
moving with it sometimes. Um, but uh, I'll do what I can. Uh, I'm really worried about the third room more than anything. That room just has like an extra Coca-Cola. Uh, Here we have a bomb room where we have to balance on this cannonball. Yeah, you can also collect coins in this room too. If you feel like you need to collect those coins. I personally don't. I don't need to collect flowers anymore either, for that matter, but <laughs> here we are, still collecting things nonetheless. Um, rock candy. I actually have a lot of rock candies right now. Oh, man. That bomb is on a mission. A mission to explode me. Okay, so here's the room I'm worried about, personally. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't know, just... Doing straight movements with this is just not ideal. So, I'm honestly kind of worried we might fail. Um, okay, I made that. I may even opt not even to bother with these treasure chests, if I'm being honest. It's just... It's just like you jump way too far. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else has this issue or not when playing this version, but... Me, I don't know. It just doesn't feel right uh, completely, but I'm managing. I only have to get... Oh, there's still some other boxes, though. <laughs> I mean, I haven't failed yet, so, I mean, that's something. I mean, much like any video game, it's just something you have to kind of get used to, I guess, but I don't know. Control stick is just very sensitive, at least on the Pro Controller, anyway. Okay, there we go. And pick me up. Still have another chest that we have to get. I mean, at the very least, we're right here. We're like, we're at the end, so this is it. And I still have plenty of chances. There we go, we got it. And um, as I mentioned before, this is actually a weapon for Malo. We get the Sonic Symbols. So, an upgraded symbols for Malo. Um, it is definitely his best item right now, so definitely equip it. And, uh, yeah, that's it for the uh, second puzzle room. Now we have the... Or the second action room, rather. We still have the second puzzle room to do. Um, hopefully this is it. Uh, this is the quiz. And, unfortunately, we can't get out of here. So yeah, we kind of have to just fail this, unfortunately. So I'm just gonna... Just keep guessing the first answer. Okay, um... No! <laughs> okay, Goomba! <laughs> uh, honey syrup. We need to fail these. Uh, Jesse James Jones. <laughs> Man, I love how, like, the first answer was correct, like, so many times in a row. That's, don't see that happening much. Okay, please be the other one. Nope. Give up. <laughs> okay. Door six is the door we want. Okay, so here is the second puzzle room. Heh. I'm the quiz master, but you can call me Dr. T. You into coin collecting, hey? Want instructions? You take me for a fool. Uh, so the goal here is one, two, three, four. There are 21 coins in this box, or at least um, you don't want to get 21. So we should have been 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, the 21st coin is the one you want to avoid. So it's basically just... It's like Honeycomb Havoc in Mario Party 2. You're just, you know, counting and trying not to be the last one to pick the number. The bad number. So that's really all it is. Heh, <laughs> you win. Nothing to it, right? You, see, you could say that. Okay. The topic, you ask. Magic buttons. Heh. <laughs> Want instructions? Nope. So the idea for this game is you want to press these buttons. And um, each time you press the buttons, 
every button that's um, adjacent to it will actually light up. Uh, not diagonal, just, you know, um, up, down, left, right, you know, those directions. Uh, if there is a button already pressed in that direction, um, you'll actually reset that button. And the goal is to ultimately press all of these down. There's a very simple way to do this. This, 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 and this. And that's like the fastest way you can solve that. Heh, <laughs> congrats. Plain sailing, eh? So, that's that one. The final one can actually be kind of tricky. This is probably the hardest um, puzzle-based uh, one you have to do. Now the topic is Ball Solitaire. Heh. <laughs> One instructions? Nah. So the idea for Ball Solitaire is you need to um, jump cannonballs over the, you know, other cannonballs. And basically you want to get it so you only have one remaining at the end of this. Uh, this can be tricky uh, just because, like, you know, you have to really keep track of what you're doing. And, you know, sometimes you may not be like that's you know, well-versed in keeping track of that information. And I, I think that's more than fair. It's, you know, I, these kind of puzzles aren't for everyone. But um, I, I personally enjoy, like, this type of puzzle personally. It's just kind of my my brand of puzzle, I guess. Um, you know, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, yeah, you kind of have to think about things. Like, I think I actually failed um, just now, believe it or not. But, um... Uh, maybe, I, maybe actually no. I think I can salvage this still. Hold on. I think if I do this, and then this, this, this. There we go. Yeah. So it's all about just like finding the right pattern you need, and then you know just paying attention to like your future moves in addition to the move you're making then, and you can usually figure it out pretty easily. <coughs> Heh, wow, simple as ABC, eh? And there we go. And much like the other puzzle room, uh, you just get a rock candy for this. And yeah, those are all the um, Bowser doors. So we've officially done all of that. And join us next time when I cover the final two optional boss fights of Super Mario RPG. See you then. Later, folks.